Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. Big hello to all my subscribers and a hello to those of you joining us from the Foundation Dentist course in Winchester. If you've only just stumbled on the channel, why not hit the subscribe button now because there are loads of interesting cases in the pipeline. In this video presentation, I'm looking at the root treatment of a mandibular molar which had sclerosed canals and lots of uh, sclerotic dentine in the pulp chamber. It turned out to be a very interesting case with six root canals, three in each root. I hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the mandibular right first molar. The tooth is associated with peripical periodontitis and is symptomatic. It's scheduled for root canal treatment. You can see that the pulp chamber is almost completely occluded with dentine. This is going to make locating the root canal orifices more challenging than usual. The root canals themselves are almost imperceivable on the radiograph. Sclerosed root canals are going to be more difficult to prepare and taper. There's a periopical radiolucency at the tip of the mesial root. This tells us that there is very likely to be patent root canal that is undoubtedly infected. At the apex of the distal root, there appears to be an apical curvature that is quite acute. And again, this is something to bear in mind when tapering the root canal. We also need to know the depth between the cusp height and the pulp floor. This can be measured from the digital radiograph and is a good indicator of how deep we need to go in order to find the orifices of the root canals without risking perforation, especially in the furcation region. I don't normally show you this, but it's my really efficient way of isolating a single tooth for root canal treatment. I like to place the rubber dam clamp on the sheet, load the whole lot onto the tooth, spring the rubber dam off the wings, and then floss between the contacts. It takes a few seconds to get really good isolation. Okay, so I've cut an access cavity and I'm now using a LN burr to remove the calcified dentine from the pulp chamber down to the level of the pulp floor. And you remember I took a measurement from the radiograph so I wouldn't risk perforating the floor of the furcation. I'm looking to see whether the orifices are visible. I've now switched to a StarTex 3 tip to refine the access cavity and remove any loose bits of calcified material. Back now to a smaller LN burr and I'm troughing along an isthmus of the mesial canals. I'm irrigating with 3% sodium hypochlorite and then viewing the access cavity with high magnification. Those three little white dots are the orifices of the root canals, so we've certainly got our work cut out. One, two, three. In the distal root, one, two, three. I'm opening up the orifices of the root canals with a ProTaper SX instrument. After coronal flaring, I use a size 10 flexophile with a watch winding action and the electronic apex locator to confirm the working lengths. 
The root canals in this tooth were really sclerosed, and so I'm using a Wave 1 Gold glider to create a reproducible glide path down to the full working length. I'm doing this in stages, recapitulating with 3% sodium hypochlorite and the size 10 patency file between each instrument until the Wave 1 Gold glider gets to the full working length. I'm now using a Wave 1 Gold small instrument to safely taper the pre-prepared glide path that I created with the Wave 1 Gold glider. When you're preparing sclerosed root canals you create a lot of dentine mud and so you can never have enough irrigation. Here I'm irrigating between instruments and after using a patency file. More irrigation now and I'm using the endo activator to agitate the solution. The canals are dried with sterile paper points before obturating, in this case with a vertically compacted gutta percha technique.
Everything is dried now and ready for obturation. Here you can see the three separate mesial canal orifices and here the three separate distal canal orifices. I took a cone fit radiograph just to confirm my lengths were all correct before down packing. Here you can see the three mesial canals after backfilling. And here you can see the three distal canals after backfilling. Here's the post-operative result from the standard clinical view. The canals are all obviously superimposed, but there's good coronal apical seal. And here a distal angled view separating the root canals and you can see that there's an excellent seal. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's many more cases in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, Enjoy your endo.